Uh, spoiler, not spoiler, heads up. Uh, this is gonna be a PG-13 video, maybe PG-15. I'm not sure, you be the judge, but there are gonna be, we're gonna talk about sex. So uh, whatever that means for you and your family, just fair warning, here we go. Hi, my name is Father Mike Schmitz, and this is Ascension Presents. So we have the seven sacraments, right? Seven sacraments, right? We have those, those seven sacraments are three sacraments of initiation, baptism, confirmation, Holy Eucharist, the, the two sacraments of vocation, and the two sacraments of healing, anointing of the sick and confession. Okay, campers, what is a sacrament? I ask, I ask this of my marriage prep couples every, every time I meet with them, not every time I meet with them, but at least once in the course of our meeting. And I've had maybe five couples be able to answer that question with a, a definition that is adequate. And then, <laughs> I understand, I, I'm putting them on the spot in this moment where they're not expecting a pop quiz from the priest in the middle of their marriage prep of, hey, what is the definition of a sacrament? But I'll ask you, what's the definition of a sacrament? There are some really good definitions out there. One helpful, I think, definition is very simple. It's a sacred sign instituted by Christ that gives grace a sacred sign instituted by Christ that gives grace. Okay, so what's grace? Grace is the very life of God, right? So it's, it's sanctifying grace. It's what makes us like God. It makes us holy. It brings us in a relationship with God. It brings us closer to God. Sanctifying grace is the grace that transforms us. It's a, without it, we're done, right? You know, we're, we're dead. With it, we become like him. With it, we become holy. We become saints, essentially. Okay, so that's what a sacrament is. A sacred sign instituted by Christ that gives grace. When it comes to marriage, it's really interesting because I will always tell our couples this, this first part, that when you're at the altar, some people will say things like, oh, Father Mike, you married my sister. I'm like, no, I promise you, I'd never married your sister. I'm unmarried. I did not marry anybody. Um, they like, you know what I mean? You know, you did the wedding. I'm like, yes, that's very different. Your sister married your brother-in-law and your brother-in-law married your sister. The Catholic theology when it comes to matrimony is that the, the groom gives the sacrament to the bride and the bride gives the sacrament to the groom. In fact, the two ministers of the sacrament are the bride and the groom. So I don't know if you knew that. The priest is there, the deacon is there, the bishop is there to witness, to bear witness to that and to essentially um, officiate, to be the you know, official witness of the church, to receive their vows essentially. When the groom says, I, Jack, take you, Jill, to be my wife, etc. And the bride says, I, Jill, take you, Jack, to be my husband, etc. With those words and the power of the Holy Spirit, the sacrament is ratified. Like at the altar, the sacrament is ratified. What I mean by that is it's made real. It's a true and real sacrament. But that's not where it ends because it's ratified at the altar, but the sacrament is not completed until the sexual embrace. I'm gonna stop that, stop here for a second. So when you have a couple at the altar, I, Jack, take you, Jill. I, Jill, take you, Jack. Ring on the finger, ring on the finger, okay? That sacrament is real. The two have become one, but the sacrament is incomplete until the sexual embrace. When with their bodies, they say what they said with their words at the altar. In fact, the sacrament remains incomplete. I think you could even say it remains invalid until that moment of the sexual embrace. And what that means is an essential part, an essential element of the sacrament of matrimony is the sexual embrace. So when I was in 10th grade or 9th grade, whenever I went through the sacraments course in religious ed, and I was like, oh, this is so boring. I can't believe, here we are talking about the saints. I had no idea that an essential part of one of those sacraments was sex. And I, I might have, I think maybe I would, might have been a little more interested if I had known this. What's the ramifications about this? Well, what the ramifications are are incredible. What do I mean? Well, I remember when my parents had their 25th wedding anniversary. The priest came over to the house and they celebrated mass in the house. They renewed the vows. It's beautiful. When my parents a few years ago had their 50th wedding anniversary, I was the priest that got to celebrate the mass and then receive their renewal of vows. It was, it was beautiful, incredible. But did you realize? And so renewing vows, awesome, super good, well done, gold star, keep it up. But did you realize that every time husband and wife entered into the sexual embrace, they are renewing their wedding vows? That's what's happening. Because at the altar, they say, I am totally yours. Uh, I'm freely, fully, faithfully, and fruitfully yours. And in the sexual embrace, that's what they're saying again. And they're not simply saying it with words, they're re-participating in the sacrament. In fact, it's, it's, it's like this. You and I, we go to confession because we need grace, right? We become, we become holier. We go to adoration. We go to mass and receive the grace of the Eucharist because we want to become holier. Did you realize that as often as a husband and wife 
enter the sexual embrace. This is just what Father Mike is saying. This is what St. Thomas Aquinas had said. Every time, as often as a husband and wife enter into the sexual embrace in a state of grace, they are growing in grace and in glory. Which is one of the reasons why I want to have like a, a book that I can write called How to Get Holy Through Good Sex or something like this because this is, blows the mind that this is actually the teaching of the church. Why does the church say that sex is so, so is only for marriage. It's not because, okay, it's dirty, because it's, it's, kind of, it's kind of gross, and so you need to save it for someone you're really special, someone's really special, someone you really love. Like, no, it's because sex is so good. It's actually not just good, it's holy. Not just holy, it is a path to holiness. If a sacrament is a sacred sign instituted by Christ that gives grace, that gives the very life of God, and marriage is a sacrament, and the sexual embrace is the renewal of that marital sacrament. As often as a husband and wife enter into the sexual embrace in a state of grace, they are growing in grace. They are growing in glory. This is incredible. This is, I mean, this is, this is remarkable. In fact, whenever I tell our, our couples this, <laughs> it goes from one hand, which is like, oh my gosh, that's weird. That seems really weird. I don't know if I can like, th they imagine that when it gets to that point in their relationship where they're married and they're having sexual embrace, that they're gonna shut the door and say, okay, God, stay outside. We're gonna shut the door, we'll open the door for you when you when when we're done and they're just kind of queasy you know kind of squeamish about the idea of like no god is participating in this on the other hand you have people who are mad <laughs> i've had brides who are so mad like why didn't they tell us this when i was in high school why didn't i why didn't i hear about this beforehand why is the church keeping this so secret and the answer is i don't know is it and not intentionally be kept being kept a secret this is just the truth the truth is that as often as a husband and wife enter into the sexual embrace in a state of grace. They are growing in grace and growing in glory. Again, I want to say it. It's like when you go to adoration, when you go to confession, when you go to mass and receive the grace of God through confession, the grace of God through the Eucharist. Husbands and wives, when you enter into the sexual embrace in a state of grace, you're receiving the grace of God by being a gift of yourself in the name of Jesus to your bride, to your, to, to your groom. This should transform the way in which husbands and wives approach each other. It changed the way our boyfriends and girlfriends and fiancés approach each other as well because this is one of those things where I can't celebrate the sacrament until the sacrament's been ratified, right? I can't actually consummate the sacrament until the sacrament has been ratified. And so that's why the church says, hey, stay away from premarital sex, not because it's bad, but because it is so incredible that actually it's meant to be the pathway to holiness, not the road to hell. It's meant to be an expression of love, not an expression of mutual self-destruction. It is so good. Such a gift. So my invitation is, if you're dating, invite the Lord into those small gestures of affection, those embraces, those kisses. Invite the Lord into that. Okay, Lord, you're part of this. If you're married, to be able to approach your spouse with that sense of, okay, we're actually renewing our vows here. In renewing our vows, we're allowing the Lord to give us a renewed dose of sanctifying grace, his very life that transforms our lives and raises us up to the level of saint. I'm not making this up. I'm telling you, this is, this is incredible. This is um, hidden. It's a secret uh, teaching of the church, but it's not meant to be a secret. I think just too many of us haven't heard it. So don't just hear it. Live it. For all of us here at Ascension Presents, my name is Father Mike. God bless.